Come on in, everybody. It's time for the Southern Route. So what's the Southern Route all about? Well, it's about Southern stuff. Southern people, Southern music, Southern food, Southern night, Southern traditions, nostalgia, and so much more. And welcome back to the Southern Route. I am your host, Shannon Courier. If you are joining us for the first time, welcome in. We love everybody here at the Southern Route, and I'm happy to have you listen in. Um, if you are familiar with the Southern Route, welcome back. It's been a couple of weeks since I have done a show. We've been running some reruns. I hope you have been able to catch up on a couple of the shows that you might have missed the first time around. Um, I'm excited to be back with you and just talk about what we've had going on over here and what we've been into and uh, let new people know what the Southern Route is all about. So I like to talk about some of my favorite things, uh, some of my favorite people, some of my favorite places. I like to share people's stories uh, and introduce you to fun and interesting people. And um, I've had a fun this past weekend. Uh, when I, let me, let me take you back to the end of the year at, around Christmas time. So I'm always looking for unique Christmas gifts for friends, family, et cetera. And especially for my parents, because they literally have everything. And the problem is, where do you put everything plus some more, right? So we all have too much stuff. And so I like to one purchase gifts that can be used up. Or I like to purchase gifts that make memories. And so for Christmas, that's what I did for my parents. Um, I purchased them some Omaha steaks that they could have. They have steaks and chicken and, you know, hot dogs and hamburgers and that kind of thing that could stock their freezer for a bit. And then I also purchased um, a weekend, a four-day vacation, actually, and booked an Airbnb for Greenville, South Carolina. Now, you may be asking, why Greenville, South Carolina? So if you are familiar with me or have heard anything about me, you know that I live in Alabama. I live in a little town called Wetumpka that is about 15 minutes outside of Montgomery, Alabama, about an hour and a half south of Birmingham. And I grew up here in Alabama. I lived here from the time I was three until I left when I was around 22, 23. So what you probably don't know about me is that I was actually born in Greenville, South Carolina. Uh, we only lived there until I was three, and we moved here to Montgomery, Alabama when I was three. So I don't have a lot of recognition about Greenville, and I have not been back since, to be honest with you. Um, the one memory that I really do have is of the house that we lived in and the sweet teenage girl that lived next door to us. And I don't remember a whole lot about her. I have a picture in my head of what she looks like. And I think we have one picture of us together, but she was kind of tall and really skinny. She was redheaded with freckles and she was the sweetest girl. And every day after school, she wanted to come home from school and she would come to our house and she would play with me and play games and dolls and ball and, you know, whatever I wanted to play at, you know, 18 months to early three year old you know, what you do with, with that age of a child. But she so enjoyed hanging out with me. And I remember that I really adored her. And her name was Tracy. And I wish I could say I knew where she was now, but I don't. Um, but when we went back to Greenville this weekend, that memory came flooding back. And it, it actually took us a minute. We had a laugh in the car because we couldn't remember her name to start off with. I always remember her name. And then the one time we're talking about it in the car, of course, I couldn't think of it. And I kept saying, I think it starts with a T. And then I would say her name's Beth. And we're like, that's not right. And eventually it came to me, of course, you know how it does in the middle of the night when you're not thinking about it anymore. It, it comes to you. But I kept going through the alphabet trying to think of her name. And her name is Tracy. And I don't even remember her last name, to be honest with you. But I remember 
playing with her and just enjoying her coming over to our house every afternoon and playing with me when she got home from school. So one of the things that we wanted to do, so I bought this trip from my mom and dad. Okay. So I bought this trip and we decided to go, we waited until the end of April. So it would be a little bit warmer because we knew we wanted to get out and walk around the town and look at the structures and walk down main street and do all of the things and do all of the things that Greenville, South Carolina had to offer. So we just went this past weekend and we were able to, we knew the street, my parents knew the street that they lived on uh, when I was born. And so we went and found that street. The name of the street was Folkston Street. We went and found that street and we drove down the street until we found the house that my parents lived in when I was born. So I got to take a picture of that. I do not remember the house, to be honest with you, but, um, and it's changed a lot, of course, uh, over the years because I am not anywhere near three years old now. Um, I'm almost, not until October, but almost 50 years older than that. So that will tell you how old I am. So a lot has changed in Greenville, but it was so special to go back and see that home and just reminisce and talk about Tracy and the times that we shared in that home and stories that my parents had of grilling out with their friends and um, I believe the the kitchen, a pan in the kitchen caught on fire one time and mom was telling me about that and she was young and didn't really know you couldn't throw the pan of grease when it was on fire into the sink and turn on the water because you know what happens with oil and water. It catches even more fire. So the drapes caught on fire. There was not any damage, but we had a lot of fun reminiscing about this house and what South Carolina, Greenville, South Carolina looked like back then. And we had a great time. So we got to find that house. We also found a house that my parents lived in before I was born. Um, it was on a street called Herd Street, and we even got to find that house. So I got pictures of those and lots of stories there and, and just really talking about how much the city had changed. The hospital I was born in isn't even the same hospital anymore. It's changed names. Uh, it's called something else. It's a big conglomerate, you know, hospital now. It's not Greenville General anymore like it was when I was growing up. Um, but we did drive by where we think the hospital used to be. And we just really spent some time. We love just riding through neighborhoods and looking at the houses and how they're built and Greenville is just absolutely beautiful. It's such a clean city and everything is, is gorgeous. The houses are gorgeous. A lot of them are so huge. Uh, we did not realize how much houses cost in that area. So we did a lot of walking and a lot of driving through neighborhoods, looking at homes and looking up to see how big they were and how much they cost because they seem like such huge houses, well, I'll tell you, they do come with huge price tags as well. Uh, we stayed in this little Airbnb on a street called Frank Street. And just at the end of the block, there was a beautiful white home that had wraparound porches, which I love wraparound porches. You know, I'm from the South, so I love those wraparound porches. and I love a white house. And it was absolutely beautiful. So we got to looking up the address because I thought this house this neighborhood is being refurbished and the houses are being updated and redone. So I knew it was going to be expensive, but we looked up this house and I'll tell you the house was $950,000. Now let me just tell you the Airbnb we were in had not been updated like this house had been. Uh, otherwise we would not have been able to afford it. Uh, but this was a gorgeous house and our little house that we stayed in, it is called the stained glass house. And it had a beautiful stained glass door uh, that you walked into at the front of the house. And it had lots of little updates on the inside. You know, the floors had been updated. It had been repainted. The kitchen had been completely redone. It had a very nice bathroom. We just had a fantastic time staying in this home. And I will suggest if you're ever going to Greenville, South Carolina and you need an Airbnb, we would absolutely recommend the stained glass house and Mike, the gentleman that owns that, such an attentive, attentive Airbnb host. 
literally had all of the amenities that you could want and such sweet little touches around the place with just little welcoming notes and books on the table of things to see and do um, chocolates on every bed and was just very welcoming and had fantastic towels it's the little things y'all that mean something to me comfortable beds soft sheets amazing towels in the bathroom those are little things that make a difference for me he also had snacks in there he had coffee already provided he had some sodas in the refrigerator so these are just little things that mean a lot and that made our trip super special for us and so we got to make some memories this weekend and so I wanted to share a little bit about what we saw and uh, so so far that's where I am in the story. We got to go back and see the home that my parents lived in first, the second home that they lived in when I was born, and we shared some great memories with that. But there's a lot more that we did on this trip that I also want to share with you because you might want to take a trip to Greenville, South Carolina yourself. So we're going to hop out. We're going to take a quick break, and then we will be right back here on TNCRadio.live. We'll be right back on the Southern Route. I'm your host, Shannon Courier. We'll talk to you shortly. <laughs> That's right. I'm not, I'm not a spring chicken anymore, but hey, but I'm doing good. I went in for a uh, full physical yesterday, requirement by my insurance company, and the doctor was like, wow, you, you're doing good. So I was, I was glad, I was very happy to hear that. Well, good. Yeah. Yeah, lost, lost some weight, blood looked good. So, yeah, all good. Yeah, fantastic. Um, yeah. <laughs> I also had a doctor appointment yesterday and went in and, you know, it was one of those appointments, you know, bend over and cough and all the kids. Worst dentist ever. I'm telling you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Jamie, how are we How are we looking out there on traffic? Uh, I think he had some updates for us while we were on break this morning. For the latest in traffic, weather, and information, catch the Morning Grind weekdays on TNCRadio.live. Hot Shots Secret presents Steve Summers' Overnight Drive nightly at midnight Eastern, 11 Central on TNCRadio.live or download the app .tncradio.live. Ready for the power of positive and something that will put you back to a time you wanted to last forever? Music is the ultimate time machine. What was your favorite time? Do you want to go back there? LTD Radio features the songs of the 70s, 80s, and 90s that will transport you to a happier time. It'll make you smile and brighten your day. We could all use that about now. TNC Radio.Live is proud to carry the great music of LTD Radio. For the latest in ride-sharing gig economy news, visit uberliftdrivers.com. That's uberliftdrivers.com. Get with Ron Frazier for Trucker's Life Radio at 9, 8 Central Mondays on TNCRadio.live. Hello, friends and family and everybody gathered in. Thank you for joining us here on the Southern Route. I am your host, Shannon Courier, and I have been talking about a recent trip that I took to Greenville, South Carolina, where I was born, and how much it meant to me and how this came about because I try to purchase gifts that can either be used up or gifts that make a memory. and that is how we got to Greenville, South Carolina. I was actually born there, lived there till I was three and have not been back since. And I wanted to take my parents on a trip and make some memories. And as you know, they're getting older, you know, I'm 52, we'll be 53 this year. And so my parents are getting older and while they are still able to uh, get around and travel and enjoy our time together, I wanted to take a trip back to where I was born and just see how the, the city had changed. And not that I have any recollection of how it used to be since I left when I was three, but they sure did. And I have to tell you, we had a fantastic time. And in case you don't know a whole lot about Greenville, um, let me give you just the quick rundown of Greenville. I'll, I'll read you the definition of it. It says, 
Greenville's downtown has long been one of the upstate's most popular destinations for shopping, dining, and entertainment, and over the past few years has amassed a multitude of accolades and awards from national publications. Livability recently ranked it one of the top 10 best downtowns in the country, and the New York Times called Greenville a national model for a pedestrian-friendly city center. Greenville has focused on creating a vibrant downtown that is authentic, sustainable, and most importantly, for people. With wide sidewalks, outdoor plazas, and street-side dining, downtown Greenville offers a pedestrian-friendly atmosphere that has been compared to that of a European city. And I just want to tell you that I would agree with all of that. One of the things that we all talked about while we were there is that the city is super clean. It is laid out beautifully. Downtown Greenville has a beautiful main street. They do a block party on the uh, every Friday night on the weekends where they have they block off some of the streets um, and they have people come down. They have live music, but it is so welcoming. So they have these really wide sidewalks. A lot of the food places down there, the restaurants have outdoor seating on these sidewalks where you can visit with people, enjoy a meal outside. It's very, very relaxing, very, very welcoming. We noticed a lot of people walking. And I commented that if you are are looking to live in a city where you might be encouraged to get out and, and be more active, Greenville is a great place for that. A lot of people out walking, a lot of people with their pets, a lot of people walking their dogs. And they even had a, you know how you have a 5K, they actually had a 5K with dogs. They had a dog 5K where you could take your dog with you and walk the 5K there in the city while we were there. And it it was just nice. A lot of the restaurants are pet friendly as well. We went into several restaurants where there were dogs and the dogs are just so well behaved as well. They just, you wouldn't have even known they were there if you hadn't been able to see them. Um, so many cities that you go into, you know, everybody's a hustle and bustle. Everybody's, you know, a million cars in the city. There's people are jumping on subways to get places. But Greenville was very, it felt family oriented, also very pedestrian friendly. They have crosswalks where the cars have to stop to let you cross. Um, But just even the restaurants were were so super friendly. And you could go in, even the nicest restaurant, we had our our final dinner there at a place called Howe's Chop House. Very nice restaurant, upscale restaurant. We did want to have one super nice meal while we were there. But there were people in there dressed, you know, very fancy. There, There were people doing prom there having their dinners there. There were business people there, but there were also just people like us that were in town for the weekend and you could go in with whatever you had on and everybody was just very welcoming and friendly, answered questions. um, And House Chop House is right on the Reedy River that runs through Greenville, South Carolina. It really is a vibrant town. It really is a place that is drawing people in. We looked up how fast Greenville, South Carolina was growing and it has grown by 16% over the last um, few years or so. And I'll tell you what, there are houses everywhere. Um, They don't have, a lot of them don't have great big yards. They are, are fairly close together, but they are so beautiful and so well maintained. And I have, I don't know that I've been to a city that has so many large condo complexes, but the structures are beautiful and they have a lot of green walls. I don't know if you know what a green wall is, but instead of having every wall of the building be concrete, they have their, their living walls. And so they have live plants on them. And so they're just very sustainable. Um, they're very environment aware there. Um, Everything is is picked up and, and cleaned up and just really enjoyed being a part of that Main Street vibe as we went through there. Um, there were, we had 
a breakfast meal at, this is not a local place, but it's um, Maple City Biscuit Company. We had a fantastic breakfast there one morning. We had the night that we got there, it was kind of late. So we went to downtown and purchased a to-go order uh, from a place called Trio where they make calzones and homemade pizzas. And that was fantastic as well. Um, we did eat at that house, Chop House. It's super fantastic. I had salmon, which is one of my favorite things to have, and some cream spinach. And uh, my husband had steak. My dad had pork chops. My mom also had a steak with the most giant loaded baked potato I have ever seen in my whole life that we actually brought half of it back to the room with us, back to the house with us because it was so huge. Um, but everything was done well. You can tell that they take pride in their city. They take pride in their restaurants. They want people to have a good experience. And we were felt welcomed and had a lot of our questions answered and really enjoyed talking to people. We got to uh, go into one of the antique stores there. And funny thing, if you, if you, know me at all you also know that I work in the trucking industry and this antique store had these patches I, I'm not really sure how old they are but they're pretty old but there is a place um of an old business uh it says Mr. Happiness on it and they used to sell these patches and they had these this whole turnstile of these trucker patches which I thought was so funny and I, I really enjoyed looking at all of them since I work in the industry but I got me a patch and the patch says from me to you 73s and 88s and I thought that that was super cute and so I bought that so I could bring that home and uh, put that on my wall. I wanted to put that in my office since that's what I do and I work in the trucking industry um, so I, I enjoyed, I enjoyed getting this patch. There were so many others. I could have bought all, all of them. They were $8 a piece and I could have bought all of them, but I didn't. And, um, but this one I thought was, was super cute. And so I brought it home and, uh, I'm going to put it up and I just want to wish 73s and 88s to everybody. You know, that is, uh, we're wishing you well, basically is what that means and hugs and kisses. And so so appropriate for me and so appropriate for the trucking industry. And uh, so anyway, we tooled downtown and we walked over to a place called uh, Gather Greenville. And it is a, you know, food and beverage uh, amusement facility there that serves as a place to gather uh, in the downtown area for the community. And this community, the Gather Greenville, is very family friendly. The owners, um, there's a father and son who created this. They wanted to have a place that was welcoming to all ages. And so it's also environmentally friendly as well. It is uh, containers that have been made into a, a gathering space. There's several restaurants in there couple of places to get drinks in there. There's a green area. They do live music during the cooler months. Um, they have uh, some crafts and stuff that go on there. They have um, dog friendly areas. So there's, there's a lot of events and everything that go on there, but lots of food to enjoy. Um, and then we uh, went on down and we got us some Froyo at one of the Froyo places and we did get to sit out on the sidewalk at these little tables and we enjoyed talking to the people that walked by while we ate our Froyo and again dog friendly they have dog friendly Froyo and a water bowl there's water bowls at lots of the restaurants through there so we really enjoyed our time there at Gather Greenville as well and uh, of course, there's more that I want to share with you in this next segment um, about the Liberty Bridge and the West End Historic District and uh, a place that we went to called Jack and Diane. So I've still got more to share. So don't go anywhere. We'll be right back uh, here on TNC Radio Live. I'm your host, Shannon Courier. We'll be right back on the Southern Route. Hey, rideshare drivers and gig economy workers. The host of TNC Radio Live, the Rideshare Rodeo Podcast, and the Gig Economy Podcast come together for news, talk, 
music, stories, laughs, and more. We're live Fridays at 7 p.m. Eastern, 6 p.m. Central, right here on TNC Radio. Do you feel like you're facing more than just the physical road ahead of you? Are you wondering if there's more to life? Join Ron Frazier, the host of Truckers Life Radio, every Monday night at 9 p.m. Eastern, where he discusses the spiritual side of a driver's life. On this show, he goes through the spiritual and moral questions drivers face on a daily basis, helping you, the driver, as you travel life's highway. Frontlane introduces Impulse, the world's first collision alert system for the driver behind you when you have to brake hard. Impulse uses ultra-bright pulsing red LEDs to alert drivers behind you who might not be giving their full attention to the road. Using amazing accelerometer technology and a battery that will last for years, Impulse installs in minutes, fits nearly any vehicle, and never requires additional wiring. Drivers react 50% faster, helping to protect you and your passengers. Learn more by visiting www.frontlane.com impulse. That's www.frontlane.com impulse. Approved by all 50 states. Impulse by Frontlane. Okay, we are back here on the Southern Route, and I am sharing about my trip to Greenville, South Carolina, where I was born and lived till I was three years old, and just sharing a little bit about our experience there. We took, uh, my husband and I took my parents there. This was their Christmas gift, and of course, we waited till it was warm so we could get out and walk around while we were there because we wanted to see everything that had changed in this city since I left when I was three. So uh, I wanted to share with you about a beautiful bridge called the Liberty Bridge. So um, the Reedy River runs through Greenville, South Carolina, and a bridge has been built um, that goes across the, um, the Reedy River. So it is called the Liberty Bridge. And um, it is so unique, and it's, it's beautiful. It's a beautiful scenery. And... Um, so I want to tell you a little bit about it first, okay? And then I'll tell you what we thought about it. So I'm going to read a little bit about the Liberty Bridge. So it was constructed over a period of 12 months by Taylor and Murphy Construction Company of Asheville, North Carolina. Uh, of course, it had a designer as well from Boston. And the bridge is described as an ultra lightweight bridge, which almost looks like it's floating on air. And it does look like that because there's nothing underneath this bridge, okay? So it's 345 feet long. It is 12 feet wide and 8 inches thick. It has a concrete reinforced deck and it is supported by a single suspension cable. The deck's distinctive curve has a radius of 214 feet and it is cantilevered toward the waterfall from supporting cables on the outside. The bridge deck also inclines 12 feet from east to west over the river. Okay, so there are three primary cable systems that work with and against each other to support the bridge to hold its position. Underneath the deck, there are three 80 millimeter diameter ring cables that provides support and place it into compression in the horizontal plane. That's a lot of construction and architectural speak, is it not? It is. Okay, so the 28 millimeter hanger cables work against the ring cables horizontally and with them vertically. The hanger cables are set at 35 to 60 degrees from vertical and are supported by the main cable. The main cable is actually three separate 80 millimeter cables. Two 90 foot tall masts weigh more than 28 tons each and lean away from the bridge at a 15 degree angle. There are 80 millimeter backstay cables that hold the mass in position. 
steel piles and rock anchors 70 feet deep into bedrock, transfer the bridge loads to the ground at the abutments, mast, and backstay foundations. Okay, while the bridge, while bridges with similar structural concepts have been built in Europe, this bridge is unique in its geometry and there is nothing like it in the United States. Below the bridge, the 28-foot Reedy River is the site where Greenville's first European settler, Richard Paris, established his trading post in 1768. Later, he built grist and sawmills at the same location, which was the hub of early industry in Greenville in the 1920s. Okay, so that is the nuts and bolts of how this bridge works. I don't understand all of that, but what I can tell you is that the bridge appears to be suspended in air. The way that these cables work, I cannot even explain it to you other than to say it's beautiful and it really doesn't even feel like that it it, it feels like it fits into the scenery and when you get on the bridge you can walk all the way across it of course you're walking over the waterfalls and stuff and and it's just absolutely beautiful and you can feel the bridge move a little bit when you're on there uh, but there's a lot of green space there. It's open. There, So many people were there taking prom pictures. It was prom weekend there in that area. So there are beautiful prom pictures being taken in this area. There are uh, geese there. There are open areas. People were picnicking. They had their blankets out, their kids out, their dogs out. They were playing ball. There were people taking pictures. There's also a beautiful hotel that is right there where you can get rooms that overlook um, the waterfalls and the river. Absolutely breathtaking. Absolutely fabulous. Um, you can even walk right down. If you climb down the rocks, which you were allowed to do, you can climb down the rocks and get pictures right there in the waterfall. Um, it really was a beautiful time and it was a gorgeous day for us. So we got to spend a lot of time just down there in the sunshine, in the fresh air, looking at, you know, kind of people watching. Uh, there's also a beautiful tree there that the roots are all exposed. And it's, it's one of their places where they say you should get a picture taken, of which of course we did. We did get our picture taken there. And so the Liberty Bridge, I just want to tell you, it's something different than you've ever seen. If you understood all of that construction talk that I read earlier, um, you will understand how this bridge works and how it is done and, and how it stays there um, without normal looking bridge bottom pieces. Um, it's very interesting and it's, it's very, it's white, it's very pretty. And uh, so we really enjoyed being there and just considering the, the stability of it, considering how it was made, considering the sustainability of it and all that it took to build this bridge in this beautiful part of the city. Um, after we left there, we did go on over to what is considered the West End Historic District of, South, of Greenville, South Carolina. Um, it was really established as a historic district in 1993, um, but it has a, a long history there. You know, it began in the 1830s. Um, Furman, is, Furman University is there. It was established in 1852. Um, you know, the Greenville Columbia Railroad was there. Um, you know, that area attracted a lot of professors and a lot of students and really homes and residential areas started developing around this commercial area. And so there were a lot of needs that needed to be met and that accelerated the growth in that area, um, you know, during the Civil War. So there was a lot going on there, you know, cotton fertilizers, a lot of the warehouses sprang up in that historic district back then. Um, a lot of commercial activities that supported the farmers that were in that region. Um, and then as that commercial district was thriving, you know, it, it really became right there almost as important as Greenville's downtown area. So as a residential area increased, schools started coming in, churches started coming in. There was a women's college there in 1893. So there was a lot of textile mills going on. And I tell you, we were walking down the street and, you know, there are, are 
manhole covers, I guess is, is what they're called. And we had to stop and take a picture because here we were in the middle of Greenville, South Carolina, walking down these beautiful sidewalks in the West End Historic District. And one of the manhole covers uh, says that it's from Opelika, Alabama. And I thought, you know, wow, a piece of my home and where I grew up and, you know, really all that I know as far as my memories go and where I live now is right here in the middle of downtown Greenville, South Carolina, where I was born and where I'm visiting and where I'm getting caught up on, you know, what's going on in Greenville and, and how things have changed and, and really learning some of the history there that I have not ever taken the time to learn. Um, there was a piece of my current home in a piece of my original home where I was built. So that was pretty interesting to see. And it just reminded me that, you know, Alabama is home and that's where I was coming back to. But there was a lot uh, to be thankful for on this trip here into Greenville, South Carolina. So um, I hope you will visit the Liberty Bridge if you decide to visit South Carolina on one of your trips. And um, we're going to be right back after this break. And I have another uh, couple of things to share with you about our final day and evening there. Um, a beautiful place called Jack and Diane's. If you're an 80s kid like I am, that name will sound very familiar. But I'll tell you what Jack and Diane's is on the other side of this break. Uh, we'll be right back here on the Southern Route on TNCRadio.live. I'm Ron Samuels. We put it in reverse gear so you can enjoy the history of popular music and hear the soundtrack of life Wednesdays at 8 Eastern and 7 Central right after the train station on TNCRadio.live. Building Strong Minds with Dr. Christopher Cortman every Monday at 7 p.m. Eastern Time. As a professional driver, you are always being told about the importance of physical fitness, your health. But what about mental fitness? On the show each week, we take on a new topic from loneliness to the power of gratitude to how to build strong relationships, all from the perspective of a driver's life. It's every Monday on TNC Radio Live at 7 p.m. Eastern. It's Building Strong Minds. Landline now every night at 11 p.m. Eastern Time, along with an encore presentation weekdays at noon, right here on TNCRadio.live. Oops, Savar here. Tune in every Monday night at 8 p.m. Eastern on TNCRadio.live for my new show, The Driver Life Podcast. From your feet to the food you eat, from cellular health to how your cell phone affects your health from how you move to improving your sleep. I believe it's the small, simple changes that lead to the big results in your life so that you can feel good again. We cover it all here on the Driver Life Podcast. It's every Monday at 8 p.m. Eastern on TNCRadio.live. Be sure to catch the Truckers Network radio show with your host, Shelly Johnson, weekdays at 3 p.m. Central, 4 p.m. Eastern, right here on tncradio.live. Okay, we are back here on the Southern Route, and I am sharing about my trip to Greenville, South Carolina, where I was born and lived till I was three years old, and just sharing a little bit about our experience there. We took, uh, my husband and I took my parents there. This was their Christmas gift, and of course we waited till it was warm so we could get out and walk around while we were there because we wanted to see everything that had changed in this city since I left when I was three. So uh, I wanted to share with you about a beautiful bridge called the Liberty Bridge. So um, the Reedy River runs through Greenville, South Carolina, and a bridge has been built um, that goes across the um, the Reedy River. So it is called the Liberty Bridge. And um, it is so unique and it's it's beautiful. It's a beautiful scenery. And um, 
So I want to tell you a little bit about it first, okay? And then I'll tell you what we thought about it. So I'm going to read a little bit about the Liberty Bridge. So it was constructed over a period of 12 months by Taylor and Murphy Construction Company of Asheville, North Carolina. Uh, of course, it had a designer as well from Boston. And the bridge is described as an ultra lightweight bridge, which almost looks like it's floating on air. And it does look like that because there's nothing underneath this bridge. Okay. So it's 345 feet long. It is 12 feet wide and eight inches thick. It has a concrete reinforced deck and it is supported by a single suspension cable. The deck's distinctive curve has a radius of 214 feet and it is cantilevered toward the waterfall from supporting cables on the outside. The bridge deck also inclines 12 feet from east to west over the river. Okay, so there are three primary cable systems that work with and against each other to support the bridge to hold its position. Underneath the deck, there are three 80 millimeter diameter ring cables that provide support and place it into compression in the horizontal plane. That's a lot of construction and architectural speak, is it not? It is. Okay, so the 28 millimeter hanger cables work against the ring cables horizontally and with them vertically. The hanger cables are set at 35 to 60 degrees from vertical and are supported by the main cable. The main cable is actually three separate 80 millimeter cables. Two 90 foot tall masts weigh more than 28 tons each and lean away from the bridge at a 15 degree angle. There are 80 millimeter backstay cables that hold the mass in position steel piles and rock anchors 70 feet deep into bedrock transfer the bridge loads to the ground at the abutments mast and backstay foundations okay while the bridge while bridges with similar structural concepts have been built in europe this bridge is unique in its geometry and there is nothing like it in the united states below the bridge the 28-foot Reedy River is the site where Greenville's first European settler, Richard Paris, established his trading post in 1768. Later, he built grist and sawmills at the same location, which was the hub of early industry in Greenville in the 1920s. Okay, so that is the nuts and bolts of how this bridge works. I don't understand all of that, but what I can tell you is that the bridge appears to be suspended in air. The way that these cables work, I cannot even explain it to you other than to say it's beautiful. And it really doesn't even feel like that it, it, it feels like it fits into the scenery. And when you get on the bridge, you can walk all the way across it. Of course, you're walking over the waterfalls and stuff. And, and it's just absolutely beautiful. And you can feel the bridge move a little bit when you're on there, uh, but there's a lot of green space there. It's open. There, So many people were there taking prom pictures. It was prom weekend there in that area, so there are beautiful prom pictures being taken in this area. There are uh, geese there. There are open areas. People were picnicking. They had their blankets out, their kids out, their dogs out. They were playing ball. There were people taking pictures. There's also a beautiful hotel that is right there where you can get rooms that overlook um, the waterfalls and the river. Absolutely breathtaking. Absolutely fabulous. Um, you can even walk right down if you climb down the rocks, which you were allowed to do. You could climb down the rocks and get pictures right there in the waterfall. Um, it really was a beautiful time and it was a gorgeous day for us. So we got to spend a lot of time just down there in the sunshine, in the fresh air, looking at, you know, kind of people watching. Uh, there's also a beautiful tree there that the roots are all exposed. And it's, it's one of their 
places where they say you should get a picture taken, which, of course, we did. We did get our picture taken there. And so the Liberty Bridge, I just want to tell you, it's something different than you've ever seen. If you understood all of that construction talk that I read earlier, um, you will understand how this bridge works and how it is done and, and how it stays there um, without a normal looking bridge bottom pieces. Um, it's very interesting and it's, it's very, it's white. It's very pretty. And, uh, so we really enjoyed being there and just considering the, the stability of it, considering how it was made, considering the sustainability of it and all that it took to build this bridge in this beautiful part of the city. Um, after we left there, we did go on over to what is considered the West End Historic District of South of Greenville, South Carolina. Um, it was really established as a historic district in 1993, um, but it has a, a long history there. You know, it began in the 1830s. Um, Furman, Furman University is there. It was established in 1852. Um, you know, the Greenville Columbia Railroad was there. Um, you know, that area attracted a lot of professors and a lot of students and really homes and residential areas started developing around this commercial area. And so there were a lot of needs that needed to be met and that accelerated the growth in that area, um, you know, during the Civil War. So there was a lot going on there, you know, cotton, fertilizers a lot of the warehouses sprang up in that historic district back then um, a lot of commercial activities that supported the farmers that were in that region um, and then as that commercial district was thriving you know it, it really became right there almost as important as Greenville's downtown area so as a residential area increased schools started coming in churches started coming in there was a women's college there in 1893 so there was a lot of textile mills going on. And I tell you, we were walking down the street and, you know, there are, are manhole covers, I guess is, is what they're called. And we had to stop and take a picture because here we were in the middle of Greenville, South Carolina, walking down these beautiful sidewalks in the West End Historic District. And one of the manhole covers uh, says that it's from Opelika, Alabama. And I thought, you know, wow, a piece of my home and where I grew up and, you know, really all that I know as far as my memories go and where I live now is right here in the middle of downtown Greenville, South Carolina, where I was born and where I'm visiting and where I'm getting caught up on, you know, what's going on in Greenville and, and how things have changed and, and really learning some of the history there that I have not ever taken the time to learn. Um, there was a piece of my current home and a piece of my original home where I was built. So that was pretty interesting to see. And it just reminded me that, you know, Alabama is home and that's where I was coming back to. But there was a lot uh, to be thankful for on this trip here into Greenville, South Carolina. So um, I hope you will visit the Liberty Bridge if you decide to visit South Carolina on one of your trips. And um, we're going to be right back after this break. And I have another uh, couple of things to share with you about our final day and evening there. Um, a beautiful place called Jack and Diane's. If you're an 80s kid like I am, that name will sound very familiar. But I'll tell you what Jack and Diane's is on the other side of this break. Uh, we'll be right back here on the Southern Route on tncradio.live. Do you have the tncradio.live app? It's free and easy to download. Just go to app.tncradio.live, Google Play, or the App Store. Get access to live streaming radio developed by drivers for drivers. Download the tncradio.live app today. Don't forget, you can hear all of our TNC Radio primetime shows again on our podcasts. Just go to tncradio.live slash podcasts 
or search for TNC Radio Live wherever you listen to podcasts. Hey, drivers! Did you hear music on TNC Radio Live that you really liked? Or maybe you heard us interview an author of a book you'd like to read or listen to. You can get the books, music, and other products you hear about by going to our website at www.tncradio.live and clicking on the shopping cart. Join Shelley Johnson and Kathy Takaro every Tuesday at 7 p.m. Central Time for Women Road Warriors on your driver navigation station, tncradio.live.